The Paraná River is a river that I'd heard about a lot. This river runs roughly 700,000 CFS. It is one place you have the chance of catching world-class size Dorado at any given point in time. The Paraná River is more for hunting big fish than, than numbers, and we knew that going in. We were setting ourselves up for maybe the most epic adventure we had ever been on. We kind of knew that we were in an area where there were a lot of Dorado. Everybody was just dialed in. Nobody was saying anything. Our guide, Lucas, he says, hey, listen, I know everything hurts right now, but if it's going to hurt, it has to be now. If it happens, it's going to happen and it's going to be pandemonium. They're here. Hey. Oh, help me, help me, help me. Oh, holy Dude, that's a big brown bro. Attention ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching our destination, Corrientes, where Cheech is going to catch more Dorado than Brig and Curtis. Thank you for choosing Aerolíneas Argentinas. Uh, this is Dorado Flight 1987, now landing in Corrientes. Once we landed in Corrientes, the guys from Set Fly Fishing came and picked us up and took us to the Itati Lodge. Lodge is right on the river. It's secluded enough that you kind of feel like you're in your own little world. They've got boat docks literally, you know, a few hundred feet away from the front door of the lodge. Your rooms actually look out over the river. You have the dining area, which is in another building right next door. Our guide Lucas would meet us every morning for breakfast. You hop on the boat and go off to whatever destination we're going to fish that day. And uh, we fish. Day one, we are ready to get after. I think we fished maybe 10, 12 hours that day. Make the cast, and the cast doesn't reach the desired 50 feet, let's say, but it gets somewhere there, let's say 40. It's better to fish that one, that rip it out, rip it out to reach the 50. It's disturbing surface twice in two shots. And your shot is in there. It's uh, done. It's done. Yeah. The guides down there typically work in in teams. I mean, I think it's because of a river safety thing, but these dudes are hardcore. They're working months at a time with no days off. And when they work a day, it's all day. When we went fishing with these guys, we'd leave at 7 a.m., say. We'd go out on the river. He's either busting his butt to get the, the boat where it needs to be, or he's got a, a push pole. Our guide was named Lucas. Now, Lucas consumed his weight daily in coca leaves. <laughs> that guy was a coca leaf aficionado. Now don't freak out, that's not drugs, that's just kind of like drinking coffee up there. It's actually the plant that is grown most of the time way up further north in Bolivia, but it's the plant that they make cocaine out of, all right? So it's a stimulant in the leaves, but the main ingredient in cocaine is like jet fuel. So cocaine minus the jet fuel and he could work all day long. The other guide was named Nico 
Now, Nico's from Buenos Aires, super chill guy, just go with the flow, eat whatever you put in front of him, just easy going. Any spare time he has, you know, is he looking at bugs? No, he's taking a nap on the boat like a boss, because that's what you do if you're a professional guide. And he was getting his people into fish. Ahí sentado. <laughs> Esta. Did it dorado? Oh, no. No. Lo tenemos en, en cámara, eh. Mejor. Qué bueno. ¿Qué pues, pasó? Dorado, ¿qué? ¿Qué lo que era? <laughs> Un dorado. Qué lindo. That actually takes some skill. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Another one. <laughs> That's on camera too. Olvidaste algo. You see that? Dude. <laughs> they like the fly. Will they come back and eat it a second time? Sometimes, yeah, but a really big one usually no. They know. Yeah. You know? So we've got eight weights strung up with floating lines, big flies, and it's kind of a game of hunt and go from spot to spot. Cheech missed his opportunity. Cheech had an opportunity. That's what you should say. It was, Cheech had an opportunity. We've it been fishing for what? Like 10 minutes. Yeah, an hour. The way I count fish, so that counts as two. Yeah. Good cast, fish eat, boom, boom, <laughs> one, Good two. Cast. When? It looked, from yeah. the wake it made, it looked big. That was a great cast. You just weren't watching. You're the guy and you're just, you're back here playing Game Boy. Look at this yeah. fish finder. <laughs> you, this is like the old school Game Boy. Guy. Not every day you get a fish with behind a fish finder 140 from Gorman Electronics. <laughs> Sometimes we even turn it on, but just by having it in the boat, they just jump in here. So we'll be here on the Parana River for a couple days and then we're gonna go into the Ibera wetlands. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. It's a blast. The lay of the land on the Parana River the Itati Lodge is in Argentina. If you cross the river and go on the other side, you're in the country of Paraguay or Paraguay. And so right down the middle of the river basically is where the two countries collide. There's no shortage of birds. There's caiman, howler monkeys that make the craziest sounds. This one afternoon, we're cruising down a side channel of the river. We see this small boat just floating unmanned. So, uh... There's also a lot of ghost boats, like that one. It's just floating down the river here with no operator. At first I asked Lucas, our guide, you know, should we stop and maybe attach to the boat and pull it out of there? And he said, it's a little sketchy because you could have uh, drug traffickers or it could belong to somebody else and we don't want to get into trouble. So we decided to work our way back upstream to see if we could find who it belonged to. Maybe they can find another boat and go chase it down. Just off to the side we saw on the bank, this little guy just jumping up and down, waving his arms at us. Okay, we found a guy stranded. Se soltó. Vamos. Found the owner. It's the dude on the shore with no boat. We assume it's his boat. Probably not too many people missing a boat in this area where we saw the boat. It was this little Paraguayo guy, he had no shoes on. Uh, was kind of filthy dirty from trying to run his canoe down the river from a dense forest. He's probably five or six feet above us. That's how high the bank was. Heads up, Brig. Rod's out of the way. So we nosed the boat as accurately as we could and, and got that in and he just kind of slid down the embankment and got in the boat. Lejos that way. No, aquí se agarra porque no. Sure enough, we get there and he says, yeah, that's my boat. Gracias, gracias. Este grande. Sí, está más grande. ¿Está bueno? ¿Quieres que te dé uno? No, no. 
¿El grande es oro? Sí, oh, ¡Qué grande! Sí. Bueno, dale, ya listo, dale, arranca, dale. arranca bien. Dale. A ver, antes sí. que salgamos, vamos a ver. Sí, pues. And he set. Yeah. No, no, no. The coolest part of that was as a form of gratitude, he wanted to offer us some of his fish. Uh, we politely declined, but it was kind of cool that he, you know, a guy that actually has to fish for a living and to feed his family or whatever, was willing to give us some fish to repay us for rescuing him. Dude, if we hadn't come along, in the water we leave no one, right? No. The water doesn't care about anybody. That's good fish karma too. Yeah, ciao. Okay, no. let's continue our thing. Now these flies that we took down, we bought a bunch of like Dorado selections. They were all way too small. We found that if we were fishing something eight to 12 inches, it didn't really matter what color it was. Oh, yeah. Did it come in? That definitely came up. Yeah. So this is a fly that I wanted to push a bunch of water. It doesn't carry a ton of water. It sheds it really easily, but this thing's gonna move Tons of water. Hopefully a big old Dorado is going to eat it. All it is is SF fibers, hackle, and bucktail. After day one, I mean, we fished all day hard. We cast and stripped. And we cast and stripped. We did that all day long. We were tired. We did not touch a single fish. For me, this trip was a lot more than just a fishing trip. I served a church mission in Argentina when I was 19 years old. I'd heard about these Golden Dorado, mostly caught out of the Santa Fe province. And so for 25 years, this has kind of been a dream fish for me. So day two started out, we just want to get off the schneid. We want to catch a fish. Our guide knows that we're making this video to, to show off their fishery to our followers. And all he has to work with is the crappy, crappy anglers from the United States that can't catch a Dorado. And all we want to do is just catch a Dorado. There was so much pressure just to catch a fish. Tensions were high. We were just so focused on trying to catch these fish. And when it didn't happen, it got frustrating. This day, we ended up eating on the river. So we get to the designated meeting place and the chefs from the lodge were there already cooking. When I Hoy día nosotros vamos a comer fideo. No puedes explicar lo que lo que estamos viendo. Bien, sí, sí. Pero tenemos las, unos fettuccinis con panceta, pimientos, zanahoria y crema. Por último, ajo y perejil. Oh, qué bien. En inglés, he said, this is going to be the best meal you've eaten this, this whole week. So get ready. No. Uh, fettuccine with bacon and peppers and a little bit of everything. So world class food world-class fishing, and then right next to us is a bunch of sabalo getting it on. Well, actually, we started to see the fish rise at lunch. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And so we asked the guides and they said, it's a sabalo, which means tarpon in Spanish, but not here. Turns out that these sabalo are the bait fish for Dorado, but not just small little bait fish. These sabalo are like five, six, seven pound carp. So our puny little six-aught hooks out there hoping to get attention. What they do is they're in spawning mode and they kind of pair off and they go kind of break the surface and make a weird sound. It sounds like a helicopter. You get out there on the water and the whole river is just full of these sabalo getting down. Just going through the masses of the fish, they were just bouncing off the trolling motor. You'd hear him hit the bottom of the boat. Sabalo keep hitting the boat. <laughs> again, again. There's thousands of them and they're coming up and then every once in a while you'd see a Dorado just slice through a couple of these fish 
and literally rip them in half. They're right there, They're right where those, right there, boom, boom. They were just destroying them into pieces so that they can feed on the remnants of what's there. Fish on. Yeah, boy. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In my mind, I will believe it's a Dorado. This what this is what we're trying to imitate. Match the hatch, boy. That's the hatch we're trying to. <laughs> Pretty much. These are long days of lots of casts, not a lot of action. We're just trying everything we can. I'm, I'm throwing an eight weight, just distance casting all I could. I'm tucking it in my arm. I'm doing the roly poly. Oh, fish on, fish on, Dorado on. And I'm thinking, okay, it's got a nice little black stripe near the tail. I finally have a Dorado. Like a, like a overground minnow. You got it, Brig? Yeah. Keep going. Dorado trucho. Pirapita? Si. Pirapita? Pirapita. The equivalent of catching a white fish, you know. It put some bendo in the rod, stoked it to catch a fish, but it still was no Dorado. Last year I had my shoulder redone. Yes, I've been crying about it for over a year. So fishing for that long, throwing a 12 inch fly with an eight weight really was killing my arm. Eat it. Oh, I gotta follow. Get him, Curtis. I'm gonna try one of those chartreuse and black thingers. Or should I try the big, big boy? I have a 12 inch fly that I had just tied on a whim here in our uh, studio. And it just so happened to be a perfect match for these mullet or these sabalo that we were mimicking as bait. I put the big, big guy on. Most predatory fish are very heavily lateral line sensitive fish, meaning that they're not looking for your fly. They can feel your fly through microscopic holes on the side of its body that go all the way to the spinal cord. Big flies that push water were absolutely critical to get that lateral line stimulated, but that's how they'd hunt. That is a big old fly. What's your biggest fish on strawberry, Brig? I could catch a 26 and a half on this. Oh, he came right up. Oh, come on, eat it, eat it. Oh, he ate it. Oh. They like it. They ate it twice. As we started to get into seeing the Sabalo and we had actually had a few Dorado roll on the flies. So we knew they were in there. Brig had taken a turn and he had moved this huge Dorado. Finally, we kind of knew that we were in an area where there were a lot of Dorado. Everybody was just dialed in. Nobody was saying anything. And our guide, Lucas, he says, hey, listen, I know everything hurts right now, but if it's gonna hurt, it has to be now. If it happens, it's gonna happen and it's gonna be pandemonium. Every single cast, I would cast out, strip, strip, strip. And in my mind, every cast I was saying, don't trout set. Don't trout set. They're here. Hey! Oh, help me, help me, help me. Yeah. Holy get, get in the, in the yeah, that's just, that's I stripped and I threw my fly line over the console of the boat. So as soon as that fish eats, Lucas freaking hurdles Curtis and Brigham. He throws my fly line up over the console. And by this point, it was almost tight. I'm pinching Holy. it with the grip as hard as I can. 
By the time I finally looked up, it was right when the fish was no, no, no. falling back in the water from the first jump. You'll hear Curtis say, oh, dude. That's how I know it was big, because Curtis was even excited. Oh, no way, dude. No freaking way. Holy sh... I got to stop swearing, because Briggs going to be editing this for hours. The fight's going to be not over there, but right here, right? Okay. Right down. He's probably going to jump one more time. Oh, my gosh. Everything that Lucas said happened. Like, these guides for this outfit know these fish so well. Okay, here he comes. We're gonna fight like this for a little bit now. Okay. That's a 12 inch fly in its mouth. Just freaking choked. Oh my gosh. Can you swing them over to you? Don't do it, just fight normally. Okay. Because, yeah, that's gonna happen maybe one more time. Okay. I think we're good now. He won't do that anymore. Not only is this the lifetime dream of mine, a 25 year fish, but I have a fish that I never thought I would be able to catch, and it's on my own fly. Date la vuelta. Eso. Eso. Gracias, chico. That was close with that wrapped around the motor. No way! He nets it and I just about turned to jello. This is the most dangerous fish to hold that you ever hold. So release some line. Come over here. Okay. Put the trolling motor down, please. We need to be you need to be very careful with this. Okay. All right? Baby. That's a dream fish for me. How how big how many pounds do you think that was? 26, 27? Woo. 28, yeah, I would say 13 it was, kilograms. That's the biggest fish I've ever caught in my whole life. That's him, man. <laughs> Once we finally saw this mystical creature and we got one in the boat, it was amazing what that did to the mood on the boat and basically set the tone for most of the rest of the trip. I've heard about these fish for 25 years people from my mission would come here and catch them. I've thought about catching one of those fish for over 25 years. It's five o'clock. We started at seven o'clock this morning. Finally caught my first Dorado and I'm out of breath, but it was on a 12 inch fly. Lucas estimated that fish to be just under 30 pounds. So biggest fish I've ever caught in my life. And I got it with my lucky buena from my hermano Nico. Here, I'll show them. Gamakatsu B10S 5 aught wire with an articulation shank in the back. So all you guys who say that a fish is gonna short strike, that's the tail, that's the hook. This is, that's insane. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that was so cool. He just, he just came up lazy and just turned and rolled right back down. And I just got all hung up on the motor. Lucas is jumping around here. Damn. <laughs> Good coaching. Yes, yeah, sir. Good coaching. After 25 years, I was able to come back to a country that I love so much. And I was able to catch this mystical beast. I, I'll never forget catching that first Dorado and the, the days that followed this. 
There's no way that we could have expected this trip to go as well as it did. And we're definitely gonna be going back to this one.